Okay, you can see, I think you can. And let me move the camera over a little bit. You see, there is my template. So I've taped it on the exact spot that, uh, template right there, exact spot. And it takes a 3 16 inch uh, uh, pilot on either side here. And then it takes a half inch in the middle. Now what I'm going to do with the half inch is I'm going to go 3 16 all the way around. And then I'm going to do the 3 16 in the middle also. And then step it up to the next size. That way we're not uh, just trying to do this all at once. And then we move on to our next... Um, next step, which is uh, attaching it to the transom. So we go get the uh, drill bits ready and we'll go from there. Okay, I'm going to show you. I don't know if I've ever showed anybody this before, but um, this is a tri tri trick I learned when I worked in the uh, automotive place a long time ago. We'd install roof racks on top of cars. Um, you didn't want to drill through the roof too far and go through the headliner. So, what the guy taught me to do is take your drill or your screw and um, hold it up like this to your drill bit and you take your blue tape or any type of tape, masking tape, whatever and wrap it around the bit where you want to stop so that way you don't go too far and come through the other side which I don't want to do on the transom all I want to do is go deep enough to where the screw just sets in there so hopefully you saw that but that's my little trick uh, it makes it much easier to, to judge where you're doing with the, uh, the drill bit and it saved us from drilling through headliners. Here we go. I'm going to put another piece of tape on this thing so it doesn't pull off. hold and went through that time but we'll put some sealing on the other side okay so here goes the center part now this is the one we want to go all the way through um, we're gonna stop for a second and someone's gonna hop on the inside and we're gonna watch as we go all the way through and see where it comes out we got up in the boat and uh, figured out that that's a perfect spot for it to go through I went with a 3 16 first, now we're doing a half inch. You'll notice that we got this little through hole pipe bed on there um, and that's just a little nipple fitting. The way you install that according to the instructions is to go in till it's finger tight and then two full turns with the vice grips all the way around just to make sure that it's nice and secure. You don't want to over tighten it. It says no Teflon tape at all. And then also put uh, painter's tape on the end of this. It could be masking tape. I just happen to have a lot of painter's tape to keep debris and all that kind of junk from getting down inside here. Because you can see I've already drilled my hole. This thing slides up just like that and it goes through. And then we're going to screw in our number 14 screws that come with the kit. Now it does not say to use epoxy or anything like that on this particular setup. So we're not going to worry about it. But we are going to use a liberal amount of 5200 and then uh, screw these in. I gotta go change my drill bit real fast to a number three because number 14 screws require a number three Phillips head attachment. If you try to use a number two Phillips head on this, you're gonna have problems. So, gonna yep, I'm gonna pokey, take, pokey there too. take this, just like. <laughs> nice. I'm going to put a bunch inside this hole. I'm going to put some on the screw holes themselves. I'm going to put some, there's a flat spot all around where this is. 
you want to create kind of a little gasket all the way around and then what we'll use is our tried and true paint thinner trick that because it removes this 5200 with ease and it creates a really awesome bead makes it look like we're professionals all right lots of 5200 Wing and a prayer. Now I'm not going to tighten any of these yet until I get them seated. Where's the third one? All right. Now we're on to the inside part of the uh, install. If you look right down there beside the blower, right there you see where my little nipple came through. So everything's good to go on both sides. And you see that little rainbow colored wire right there? Uh, I ran that all the way up to the helm to make sure I have enough because I'm gonna mount the rocker switches either here or there. I'm not really sure yet. So that way they're real close to my right hand to adjust. I'm just not sure what I'm gonna like yet. So that's, we're not at that point so far. But we have to mount the hydraulic pump. Um, oops, I zoomed in on you, sorry guys. Uh, we have to mount the hydraulic pump and it uses this little bracket right here that goes on the back and it slides down and, and keeps it from, from falling off. I'm gonna mount it to this little bulkhead right here. It's nice and sturdy. Yeah, it's something you have to take apart to service the engine, but I'm not screwing this at an angle on the transom. And uh, we didn't build a provision for it whenever we rebuilt the boat, so we're just going to go with what we have. So we're going to mount to this piece right here, get it mounted, and then we're going to start threading our, our tubes through uh, for our hydraulic stuff, which I'll show you how to do that here in a second. And it uh, should be fairly simple. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this thing on the uh, bulkhead here, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so I've removed the blower just to give you a better look at this. Um, you see there's the 90 coming off of there. And it says in the instructions to put vice grips on that tube that comes through the transom. So when you're tightening down this piece, you're not tightening the tube also. So I'm gonna grab, that's a 9 16 inch brass 90. And I'm just gonna hold on to that with my left hand and then tighten the other one. And I want it facing kind of about the way the pliers are right now. So that way it can go over here to my mounting bracket where my trim pump's gonna be. So here we go. All right, so I've got one of them done. You see right there basically you put that on there and you tighten it up one full turn that's all you do to get that that hose in there and I bring the hose all the way across which we'll zip tie up later and we're gonna bring it around and we're gonna put it on our trim pump I'm gonna go ahead and mount the uh, trim pump or the, the hydraulic pump right now it's called an HPU so let's go that route from now on and then we'll cut it with a razor blade and then we'll do the same thing on that brass here you can see I've got them attached to the uh, hydraulic unit uh, up against the uh, bulkhead here. I've got the electrical hooked up just temporarily. Uh, and then basically the way that you put these in is you just loosen these little ferrules up. You push this in until it stops and you tighten these up one turn after finger tight. And what that does is it kind of pinches it in uh, nice and firm. We are now to the part where I have to put the, um, the, the actual switch mechanism up here in the front. Now I, I looked at it behind here and it just didn't make sense and plus the big control mechanism for my throttle is back there. This I've got lots of open space and also when I have the throttle open, you see here, it actually goes by it. You can see the small outline and so my knuckles aren't going to touch it but that'll be really close to my fingertips to where I can adjust it as I'm going down the uh, lake. So what you have to do is you take it and you mark that and then we're going to find the center and then you put the center of this hole saw drill bit on there and then you start drilling and then you're gonna have a big two and a half inch hole right there on the side of your boat there make sure you don't go too far
That's it. Now I've made a mess. That's nasty. So now the rockers will fit in here. You just feed your wire through like this. Like that. You want to make sure that you're happy with uh, if it's level. I'm happy with that. Pick our pencil. Then we're going to go drill some pilot holes and screw it down and then clean up. It's nasty. I'm filming. <laughs> Burning the inside of my nose. Oh man, it burned all the hair out of my nose. Smells good, doesn't it? Oh. Oh god, that hurt. I smell burnt hair now. <laughs> all right. All right, so now what I'm doing Now what I'm doing is uh, going to solder these ends on. Uh, you shorten it to the length that you want and then you crimp these on. You notice I've got my heat shrink up here. First things we're going to do I'm going to do this. Shouldn't take too long to heat this up because it's about 4,000 degrees outside right now. Just like that. And there's my telephone. You just hold it right on the bottom. Oh, now there we go see that just sucks in there takes about 30 seconds on these there we go Like that, I got one more. That's it. That's now, the red, one. the red one's done. Um, what you do now is you wait for them to cool, and then you'll slide your heat shrink down. If you don't let it cool first before you slide your heat shrink, it actually touches the metal and it'll start shrinking prematurely. If you lick your fingers, haha, <laughs> hang on to that. There we go. You just slide them down over the. Over the connection. And this heat shrink is a little on the small side but it works. Oh, it's hot out here. Yeah. All right, then you just take your heat and shrink it up. Done deal. So now, if we don't melt, God, it's hot. I don't know how we did this last year. You grab your switch assembly and we actually read the instructions again just to make sure everything was good and you see this got a B and a Y and everything else, so it's pretty self-explanatory about where it goes. 
you have to pardon me about not being very talkative, but it is so hot. The green goes on the end. And the red goes on this side. The other two electrical connections you got to make are power, which is the orange wire right beside my right hand, and then ground, which is actually back at the uh, trim unit or the pump itself. And what we're going to do with the ground is we're going to actually um, attach it to the trim pump ground because there's a big, nice, solid wire that goes back to it. So there you go. That's how you make nice connections. I'm going to feed this guy in. I had two yellows and but you could go to either direction because it gave you two connections in case you had something backing up to it and you couldn't get to that particular screw okay so you could do either one okay, okay. just like that we'll get my screwdriver Got it. That's all we have to do. So now I gotta get up underneath the dash somewhere and find me a hot wire. What I'm doing right now is I'm looking for a hot source. Anything? Zero. One, no. 12.48. Turn off the ignition. 12.57. All right, so if that's a hot all the time, we yeah. don't need that. Yeah. All right, turn on the ignition. Two point zero two one zero one. Uh, Twelve point five four. Turned off. Twelve point five four six. So we got hot ones only up here. Turn it on. Zero. Twelve, twelve, two. Okay, turn it off. Zero. Okay, so we got a we got ignition wire. Do it again. Twelve, two. Turn it off. Zero. Okay, so we have a hot wire here. Well, we're at the point now to where we need to bleed the system. Uh, we filled it up with uh, uh, automatic transmission fluid uh, with just using the uh, old pump that we used to fill up the lower units in these uh, uh, mercury uh, uh, stern drives. So uh, we can't do the bleeding right here because my bunks stick out too far and the trim tabs can't go down. So we're actually going to take it to the lake, back it down to where we can back it just off the trailer enough, pull it back out, do the adjustments and the bleeding and all that kind of stuff and go for a lake test. So here we go.